All right, so we're just doing this. I don't even know what this sounds like right now. I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna try because this is the. This is my tenth time to do this video, and it's driving me insane. And not just today. I've been trying for two weeks to do this video, and I've had problems every single time. So I hope this turns out okay. Trying to work on, like I said, for two, maybe three weeks. I've recorded it so many times, but every single time I've gone into the editing bay, I found out there was something wrong. One of the issues was the fact that if, if I touch or fiddle with the, the USB cable, then it would cause some kind of interference that would mess with the audio for the rest of the video and it would just be unusable. So I'm not touching it this time, but I do have some footage of me handling this device that I will show you as I go along. So that way you'll still be able to see it. So anyway, this video right here is about a very particular microphone that has had a very special place in my life. And by that, I mean that it's a microphone that I've reviewed multiple times, trying to be fair to it, always bringing up its pros and cons, but people are never happy. People are never satisfied with the way that I have reviewed this particular microphone. And yes, the title of this video will be a little bit confusing because I, I think I've earned something for how much I had to make to make this work. So the microphone that we have right here is the Samson Go mic. It actually will be in the description. Um, this microphone is one that I have, like I said, reviewed multiple times. And every single time I've reviewed it, I've never really been satisfied with this microphone. What I'm, what that means is, is it's never on my list of voiceover microphones. And I've explained it multiple times, but I'll explain it again. By voiceover, I mean that this doesn't have voiceover quality and shouldn't be used for professional work. Now, a couple of the reasons that I kept saying that, one of the, a couple of major reasons, that I, major problems that I had with this microphone was, number one, how sensitive this microphone is. My God, it's like having just the capsule by itself with, no, with nothing around it. It has no shock absorption. I mean, obviously, because it's so small, it has no shock absorption. Uh, most, you know, large diaphragms, you know, or even, you know, even dynamic microphones have some kind of housing or casing that actually helps with some of the handling noise. Obviously, you're not going to get rid of all of it, but, you know, if it's a large diaphragm, it'll sometimes be suspended, you know, with some kind of suspension uh, set up, whether it's springs or whether it's, you know, um, rubber or whatever. That's normally how it is. But this microphone is not held on by any of that. There is not enough room for anything like that because it's so small. This microphone is literally just firmly attached to the rest of the body. So if you touch it in any way, if you touch, touch anything, it hears all of it. Doesn't matter how small, how slight the sound is. Uh, number two, uh, there was no way of attaching this to a stand without multiple layers. Oh my God, I just smacked it. Multiple layers of adaptation, meaning I had to get a specific size, um, you know, uh, uh, threading to attach a the kind of shock mount that would go onto the top of like a camera and then attach the 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 mount the the thing that this actually normally came on onto that with another adapter because it was an a, a even more specific threading to actually be able to hook that on there and so then you'd have like three or four layers of adapted threading just to get this thing on some kind of stand that you'd actually be able to stand up and do voiceover because standing up and doing voiceover is what is preferred for doing voiceover which is one of the reasons that i said that this was not a voiceover mic but what i wanted to do because so many people vehemently defended this microphone and still do i wanted to see if i could fix those issues and still keep this microphone in its relatively small package, which was the one thing that I really, really liked about this microphone is the fact that it was 
very, very small. That and the fact that it did actually, it does actually have live monitoring, which some USB mics still don't have, which is still blows my mind. But this one does. And so uh, it also does have a switch for, you know, on and off, and it does have a switch for changing the capsules. However, the, the capsule setting that I have right now is really the only one usable. The rest of them, it's just kind of like, it just sounds like a laptop mic. It's a little too omnidirectional. It just doesn't sound all that good. But this one is the best of the settings. So what I wanted to do is I actually wanted to create some kind of housing for this thing that I could still get to the headphone and the USB port on the side. That was number one. Number two, I wanted a, the ability to put it in an actual shock mount, you know, actually, so I could actually suspend it, you know, with one of these, you know, aluminum shock mounts or metal shock mounts and actually be able to kind of like move it a little bit or step around it and it not get translated into the microphone because it was so sensitive. Number three, pop filters and plosives. Now, another one of the problems that I had before is because this is such a small microphone. And it's, it's benefit of being such a small microphone is you can have it like right in front of you and still see your entire screen. You don't have to look around it. It's basically not in your point of view. You can read an entire script and you can be right in front of it. You can't do that with every large diaphragm. You can't do that with every shotgun mic. You can't do that with every microphone. But this one, because it's so small and it's such a small profile, the benefit of it being this small is that, you know, you can look around it. And so that would be a good thing for voiceover. So I wanted to create some kind of pop filter system because, again, incredibly sensitive that would still complement its small size. Now, the pop filter that I've created is not perfect. You can still hear some of the plosives that, you know, are just getting into there, but it's not as bad as it was before. Go check out the other videos from before and you'll see what I mean. So I had to do a couple things. Now, first, I actually just wanted to create this tiny little foam dish, this little foam section, which is actually two pieces of very thin foam that are glued together with some wiring, some very thin wiring going through it like that, and it's glued together. But I was still getting some some plosives. Some was still getting, and that's mostly because there's like, I don't know, less than an inch between the back of this and the front of the capsule. So I still had to figure out something. So I put a piece of very thin silk-like fabric glued to this side to, again, try to catch some of the plosives, some of the air. Still wasn't enough. It was still getting around it because it's so small. So I had then created this tiny little sock to go over it that kind of acts as one of those foam wind covers that you'd find on most other dynamic micro or most, um, uh, yeah, no, a uh, large diaphragm or dynamic microphone. Just one of those fo foam covers. Obviously, I couldn't do foam because, as I said before, there is no actual wind cover that is designed, or really any accessory at all, that I could find that's designed for this microphone. And what's weird is this isn't the only small microphone of this size. There's tons of other microphones. Uh, I think Amazon has one. Um, there's a couple of other microphone companies that have microphones approximately this size. And they all basically serve the same purpose. They're designed for, you know, easy carry with you. You know, if you're going to like a coffee shop and you don't want to carry like a whole bunch of stuff, you just carry this tiny little microphone, you know, put it there. You can still have a conference or you can go on the road with it. It comes in this tiny little, little tiny, like, like, you know, Mentos or yeah. One of those little like Altoid cans. It's about that, that, about that big. Actually, I think it's a little bit smaller and you'd be able to carry this entire thing in one of those and then just go on the road with it and then you could still do conferences you could still do you know if you do vlogs with your laptop or whatever and this thing actually does connect to an iphone which i did do uh or uh, yeah an iphone and an ipad which i did do a video on which again didn't go over where it very well because this microphone is very noisy which was another one i problem which i can't fix i cannot fix that but i can tweak it in editing I can, and you can too. Like anyone can, can kind of clean this up and kind of put focus on the, the higher ends uh, if you want more focus on the higher end or the mid-range or, you know, wherever. I, actually, I think you probably want to put more focus on the lower, lower mid to lower frequencies because this is kind of like a sibilant microphone. 
But anyway, uh, you, and you would be able to clean it up uh, a good bit. But this shouldn't be your forever mic. You should always be looking to, you know, upgrade. But having said that, there was a lot of people that said that they own this microphone and they wanted to know what they could do to improve it. They didn't want to buy another microphone because, you know, they, they had just bought it. They didn't see any reason to, to um, you know, upgrade yet, which is totally fine. Um, and so I wanted to put this, this together to try to show that you can do something about that. Now, I made a huge mistake. I mean, I make tons, but I made a huge mistake. I didn't film myself making this, this device, this little thing that it sits in right here. I didn't film myself making that. And the reason was, was because, so this one right here was actually supposed to be the prototype. And then I was actually going to be doing a proper setup afterwards. The goal was I would use this first um, PVC cap that I have right here which is what the whole thing is housed in, as the, the kind of um, template or the kind of just running through ideas. But it ended up working so well that I ended up just finishing it, and I didn't film it. So that is, uh, that is a huge you know, mistake that I made. Um, so uh, if you guys are wanting to see me you know, make another one of these or you know, do a video on making this... Um, if this video gets enough, you know, views and likes, then I'll absolutely do it. If nobody cares, then it's totally fine. Now, again, I'm trying not to touch this microphone because I don't want to, like, mess with the, the cable and get it, you know, come out and to desync the audio or do any of the digital issues that it had. Um, but I can, I can tell you that just by touching the cords... Excuse me. There's not that much noise that you're getting through there. There's a couple things that I did. And this could help you as well with pretty much any any microphone, especially if it's a USB microphone. Um, one is that I have this, uh, I don't know how well you can see this, but this uh, Velcro um, strap, basically, that actually has the, the USB and the headphone cable strapped on and then is attached to just the... the stand itself. This does a couple things. Number one, it prevents a lot of the the noise and vibration to be transferred back up through the cable and into the microphone unless you're messing with the cable past where the Velcro actually is. Um, also, it's preventing uh, a lot of noise from being transmitted through the stand itself. Not a lot, but just kind of helping a little bit because what's happening with vibrations is if there's nothing in the way, there's nothing to dissipate some of the, the vibration or to take some of that away, it's going all the way into the microphone. So by having this, these cables and this Velcro is actually absorbing some of the handling noise from the stand, and the stand is actually acting to take care of some of the handling noise from the cables. It's complicated, but trust me, it works. The second thing that I did, as far as like the handling noise on the cables, was I actually have these hair ties, these, uh, these elastic hair ties that are actually going around the device that I have, and those are actually bracing, holding and bracing up against the headphone cables. So that means that even if I do mess with these cables before they get to the, just before they get to the microphone, there's a little bit of vibration that's being dissipated by the, the hair bands because those are being stretched around the entire device and those are touching the cable and so any vibration is coming through and some of it is actually getting taken through through the hair bands. I tried it without and yes, it does make a difference. Um, but yeah, that's a couple ways that I was able to get rid of some of the handling noise. So, final thoughts. Final thoughts. Now, I still... Wait, calm down. Calm down. I'll explain. I still don't think that this is a voiceover mic. The way it comes. Because what I, what I mean by that is all of this, the way of fixing the, the, the harsh plosive, the handling noise, you know, the, the vibration, I had to do a lot of this. I had to do a lot of these different tactics and things. So the microphone itself 
the way it comes out of the box. Also, I had to remove that stand that it comes with, that little clip metal stand. I had to completely remove it off that, obviously. Like, had to completely saw it off and sand it down. So I had to do a lot of modifications to this microphone. Excuse me. A lot of modifications to this microphone to make it work. Now, it is actually a better sounding microphone now and is easier to deal with and handle and has better features than the first voiceover microphone I've ever worked with. The first voiceover microphone I ever worked with was the MXL.006 USB. Now, I looked up and pretty much these two microphones, the, the MXL.006 and the Samson Go mic, can basically be found for the same price. They're both USB. They're both 44.1 kilohertz at 16-bit. I think the MXL is 20 kilohertz to 20 hertz, I think, uh, or 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, whatever. And this one is um, 20 to 16 kilohertz. So there is a little bit of difference, but listening back to a lot of my old voiceover that I had with that microphone was really, really bad. Now, a couple couple things is, number one, I was inexperienced. Number two, I didn't know how to edit. And number three, I didn't actually put that much time and energy into getting rid of handling noise, plosives, vibrations, and all that kind of stuff. Also, a feature that this has that the MXL didn't is live monitoring. And that helps me a lot. That really helps me a lot. The, the fact that I can listen to myself while recording, being the fact that I'm the one who has to, rec- has to edit all of my stuff and there's no one in the studio, there's kind of a back and forth whether or not you should wear headphones, whether or not you should monitor yourself, and I'll probably do a video on that later. But it helps me because if I know I've made a mistake, if I know I've popped the mic because, you know, whatever, uh, I don't like, you know, uh, I just have the foam cover on my shotgun mic, and I normally have it at kind of a 45-degree angle. So that normally helps with plosives, but every now and then I do get plosives. And sometimes it's very, very important. It's a very, very important word. Like it was a client company name and it's got a lot of P's in it or whatever. I obviously don't want to mess that one up. So if I hear it, I hear the plosive, I automatically know to, to, you know, stop that line, stop, you know, snap and try it again and keep trying until I get that one right. And that way I don't got to record the entire thing like I used to record the entire script, go into the editing bay and then find out everything was wrong. And then I got to go back in and do the whole thing all over again. Because if I'm able to monitor myself, I don't have to do the whole thing all over again. Basically, I just have to go up to the point that I make a mistake, stop, start over, try again. So I don't have to do it all over again. And if I, you know, was doing it the old way, I would, you know, go back in, record it again, and then I would make all new mistakes. I'd have to record it again. And it would just be, it, would, it, just, it was a huge time waster. Having live monitoring is a huge help. So, would I say that this right here, if you made this kind of capsule and was able to handle the plosives and knew how to properly edit this microphone in Audacity or whatever your program is, would this be a voiceover mic? Yes. For amateur and beginning level voiceover, yes it is. But you need to know how to edit it. You need to know how to edit it. You need to know how to suspend it take care of the handling noise, and deal with the plosives. If you don't, then you might as well have a $1,000 microphone. It really doesn't matter. You might as well have a $1,000 microphone, you know, $100 mixer, and then just be making all the same mistakes. It really doesn't matter. This kind of setup in the hands of someone who knows what they're doing is more beneficial than, you know, thousands of dollars of gear in the hands of an amateur. I would never say that... If I lost, you know, this microphone or my more expensive stuff, that if as long as I have this microphone, I would still have a good career? Probably not. And the reason I say that is because a lot of stuff that I have to do needs a lot of editing and needs a lot of compression, needs a lot of cleanup, and needs a lot of, um, you know, pitch shift or whatever, what have you. Do a lot of things that involve 
editing on that level. And not just me, not just me doing it, but also the clients doing it. And being the fact that this is a 44.1 kilohertz at 16 bit, there's not a lot of wiggle room. This is bare minimum, whoop, this is bare minimum for voiceover. If there's not a lot of editing happening, it's totally fine. Um, and the reason for that is, is that the, the more kilohertz you have, the more hertz that you have, rather, um, and the higher the bit rate, the more flexibility there is in the editing. So when it comes to character work, this is definitely not a character voiceover mic. But if you're not changing the pitch, if you're not having to, you know, you know, mix and match or do a, a lot of heavy compression or anything like that, you're not changing the levels all that much, then if you're just doing like audiobooks, this would be totally fine. If you're just doing commercials for like social media, totally fine. It's still going to need cleanup, but as long as you have it in this kind of ho housing, you know, you deal with the handling, you got the pop filter, this right here is a voiceover mic. So there you go. There you go. I finally said it for this microphone, but I still had to do a lot of work to make it happen. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Totally fine. Subscribe if you're new, bell for notifications, and leave down in the comment section below if you'd like to see any other kind of video or have any questions. Totally fine. Subscribe if you're new. I already said that. Um, I think so. Bye. <laughs>